We are seeing clearly today that the depth on the defensive front for the Tennessee Titans, much better than a year ago. Seeing clearly presented by Toyo's Clinic, Outkick 360's trusted partner for all things LASIK and hair restoration. Call 888-315-3937 to schedule a consultation today with Toyo's Clinic. 888-315-3937. Guys, seeing clearly that the depth, and it started from the jump, against the Falcons. Uh, Lerone Murchison, I thought, gave some great snaps in his play. Uh, Trevin Coley, before his injury, he was very effective. Of course, Rashad Weaver, we, we've touched on that. But beyond that, five sacks, five tackles for loss, nine quarterback hits by the defensive line in this game. They wreaked havoc. Yeah, very good. That's that's a good group with the back-end guys that we didn't know much about, Coley, Pico, um, who who uh, are you making roster bids? Coley now probably gone for the year based on national reports about the foot injury. I've seen a specialist today, I believe. So uh, Robert Andrews. But, yeah. um, so he's probably out of the mix. Uh, looks good for Pico now. Um, uh, for that last spot. I think five defensive linemen's probably what you keep. You've got somebody handy um, on on the practice squad, uh, maybe including a big guy to, to be behind Tart for straight out nose tackle snaps. Anthony Rush, very, very big guy who might be he great is. in a uh, in a what do you think about game Murchison against a run guy? So far. Murchison's an energetic guy who looks like he's taking a year two step as opposed to heading towards a he sophomore did, Yeah, slump. it looks like he took you know, a deep breath and there's some comfortable aspects to his start to camp so far. Yeah, and he's an end and a tackle. I, right, I don't know right. who's a, a yeah, tackle I'm not and nose. A, a nose. Right. That, that's the one place that uh, I, I guess Pico probably. Yeah, he's probably getting that role. And, and Coley started games for the Browns. Yeah, he played I mean, when I started a looking at his resume. bio. Yeah. Um, you forget how, you know, his experience was going to factor into this line and he again, he he played very well and then you could tell when he went down it was not good. So can you guys, injuries a concern. It, we, we should also hit on Darrington Evans and uh, the kicker situation with Tucker McCann. But go ahead, we'll go there in a second. Can you guys really tell the difference between Logan Woodside and Matt Barkley? No, they Barkley seem has like a the same. Arm. They well, seem like the Barkley same. Barkley has a player stronger arm, but Woodside was under more of an attack than than Barkley was as well. I, and Barkley I, I only just, threw five passes or completed five well, passes. The, the I feel like is a Woodside lot of, knows the offense. Correct, and I feel like so much of the debate about backup quarterback lies with, well, it's clear that Vrabel trusts Logan Woodside more because he knows the offense. He's been around longer. Well, that's great, but we can still have the discussion of who's the better quarterback. Yeah. I mean, oh, that, to yeah, me, that's a very sure. convenient excuse of, well, they like this guy because he's, they're more comfortable with him. They know him better, and he knows the offense better. Well, then why have shows like this if we can't discuss who the actual better option is than just say, well, you know, the head coach likes him better. Barclay's so that's got all a, we're going to discuss. Barclay's clearly got a better arm. But I don't know that you could judge Woodside too much out of that game. I'm surprised how many people were saying he was good. I don't think he was good. I think there he was were, under assault. He was under assault. The, the, the touchdown pass to Cam Batson was yeah, it was perfect. nice. And Batson, nice. Played, no, it. Batson played it perfect. very intelligently. I mean, that, that was an NFL throw from Logan Woodside. I mean, back shoulder to a 5'8 wide receiver. And a great play It has by to Batson. be pinpoint precision. And Woodside put it there to his credit. And Batson played it very well also. Yeah, he wasn't – whenever he tried – whenever he stemmed, he wasn't pressed off the stem uh, by the defensive back. It was good coverage by Chris Williamson, who's the corner on that play. Uh, it was a great throw, great catch, overall good play. Um, and, and it came off of uh, what was a good defensive effort by the Titans to put them in that situation. Uh, Woodside had the better day, but to Chad's point, it, it's hard to judge based on what 15 pass attempts for Woodside and a very limited number of attempts by five completions by five completions by Barkley. There is a debate to be had about backup quarterback, and I'm not willing to put that debate aside just by saying, well, Mike Vrabel likes Logan Woodside more because he knows the offense. And Logan Woodside may end up being the better option. I'm not saying that I've, after one game that I'm crowning Matt Barkley the best option at backup quarterback. But I do believe that there is a debate to be had about who the better option will be. There is, there there is a Ryan debate, Tannehill. but the Rabel likes him thing goes a long way towards determining who's going to win the spot. Watching and Woodside's him, the favorite. Watching Barkley throw when he came in, though, you can clearly see he has the stronger yeah, he's better on. on, for sure. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every time Outkick 360 goes live. We are live weekdays, 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, right here across the Outkick Network. And while you're at it, like this video and let us know what you think in the comments below.